the time has just gone 3.30 CAT. So I will kick off the seminar session. Thank you to the few of us who are online and who have given up a little bit of time to train us for the seminar series. Today we have two speakers for you, one from Pwani University and one from the University of Science and Technology, Bumakumali. The first seminar will be given to us by, by uh, Michael Landy. Um, Diango, can I just ask that you stop sharing your screen and that uh, Michael can start sharing his screen? And while you're doing that, I'll just do a quick introduction for Michael. So Michael is an Ian Bit scholar who is completing his MSc in bioinformatics. He is also a graduate of Pwani University and already holds a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. He's also co-founder of the Bioinformatics Hub Kenya, an open science initiative that promotes training, networking, collaborating in an open um, open space. So, Michael, without further ado, I'll allow you to get straight into your talk. Okay, thanks, Verena. Sorry, uh, Michael, just, just before hope, you start, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. um, we can see the chat box open in your shared screen. So, if yeah, you just want to minimize that. To, let me just stop sharing. I don't know. Okay. Just a moment. There you go. Okay, perfect, perfect. Please go ahead. <coughs> All right, thank you very much, Verena, for uh, that introduction. Uh, I'm going to take you through my uh, master's thesis entitled Immunoglobulin Annotation of uh, annotation optimizing and benchmarking, as well as a uh, novel germline allele discovery in African bovine breeds. Uh, antibodies are critical molecules of, of the adaptive immune uh, response of uh, vertebrates. Uh, on my left here is a structure of uh, antibody uh, that is uh, comprised of the variable region as well as the constant region. Uh, the variable region is uh, normally encoded by the uh, variable gene V, uh, diversity, diversity D, and joining genes uh, J, as well as it's also composed of uh, three complementarity determining regions, uh, which are more variable uh, than the framework uh, region. And normally the variable domain is directly involved in, um, uh, in the attachment of the uh, antigens. Uh, so bovine antibody uh, repertoire is primarily diversified by uh, VDJ recombination processes. Um, looking at the genetic diversity of uh, this antibody, as you can see in the image, it shows uh, the VDJ recombination process. And at the start here is in the germline uh, genes where we have multiple uh, V, uh, D and J genes that undergo uh, somatic mutation and affinity maturations to uh, result to an antibody that is uh, specific to a specific antigen. And so my project uh, basically focuses on annotating these uh, antibodies as well as trying to uh, predict moving backwards what uh, the germline uh, uh, looks like and to predict the uh, novel uh, ideals. So the reason why I'm doing this project is the fact that uh, available annotation tools are human centric and therefore are not optimized to annotate uh, bovine antibody sequences as well as characterizing germline uh, genes of African bovine breeds are not as been sufficiently uh, done. To my objectives or of the project, the main being to benchmark and optimize annotation of bovine antibody sequences and discover the germline alleles in African bovine uh, antibody sequences specifically to assess immunoinformatics tools for annotation of bovine 
antibody sequences. Uh, secondly, to uh, pre oval germline alleles of African cattle breeds. And lastly, to measure the di genetic diversity of novel germline alleles using uh, pairwise humming distances. Uh, so to the first objective benchmarking annotation tools, there isn't a gold standard uh, data set for the validating uh, bovine B cell repertoire. And for this reason, uh, for this objective, we try to simulate uh, bovine um, antibody repertoire using a tool called uh, IG uh, simulator version two. And what happens here, this tool will simulate uh, uh, most likely uh, to look like a, an, anti, uh, an antibody repertoire of bovine. And the resultant interesting files that this uh, tool gives is a paired end Illumina read, yeah, that we'll use for the second step I'll explain, as well as a read VDJ recombination file that actually contains uh, different antibodies with specific VDJ uh, genes. So the next step for this objective was to do an alignment and an annotation. And here we uh, selected um, three tools, IMGT High Vquest, IGBlast, and MixCR. These are the commonly used annotation tools. And when we're doing the annotation and alignment uh, of these simulated datas, data, we actually used uh, default parameters so that we can be fair for all these tools before we benchmark. So the third step is to benchmark the benchmarking analysis where now, uh, as I mentioned, the read VDJ recombination file represents us like the true, um, true file. So the true picture of how each antibody represents uh, the VDJ genes present. So trying to compare this with the annotation outputs that we get from step two. And based on uh, misseed frequencies as well as misseed uh, distribution. Uh, on the results of the first objective. So for the misheat percentage frequencies, uh, this is a bar plot that shows uh, our results. And we, uh, we found that uh, IG blast, IG blast and mix here actually had a lower uh, error rate in annotating V, v genes with a 4% error rate compared to mix here, which had a higher error rate of 13%. Uh, whereas if you look at uh, MixCR, it had a lower uh, error rate in annotating uh, JGN with 15% compared to the to IMGTN and uh, IGBlast. Uh, generally, you see like in, in green, bars in green, uh, poor annotation for D, D genes, especially for IMGT, which had a higher error rate. So we went ahead and looked at the distribution. So here I present um, heat maps. So the first one is a representation of uh, IG blast, uh, IMGT, and MixCR. And we're interested to look at the, how the distribution of these uh, V genes are actually annotated. Diagonally, you see that these are the uh, correct hits. Yeah. And in general, we see that MixCR has got uh, pure, uh, poor annotation of this uh, V gene as we've seen 13 percent error rate with a lot of uh, pinks and reds and just to note uh, this this one gene v133 that was misidentified as v121 across uh, the three tools as well as uh, a chunk of v1 v130 and v127 that was misidentified as v117 and v1 uh, 20. As you can see, the same portion for uh, all the other tools. So moving forward, we try to look at uh, if we can try to adjust our our jam line to be bovine adapted. And so because uh, bovine utilizes uh, two only two jam line uh, J genes, uh, J16 and J1, J24. So we uh, maintain this in our, in our input, as well as trying because V133 and V121 is identical even if, uh, at uh, nucleotide level. And we could actually see in the heat map that they are misidentified. So we maintained only one gene 
in our analysis. So we went ahead and did these modifications and tried to do uh, the benchmarking again and only to find that IG Blast now has got a 0% error rate in annotating uh, VGINs as well as AMGT. But still, MixCR has got a uh, got, uh, 10% error rate in annotating uh, VGINs. But now we see MixCR to have improved the annotation of JGIN with the 0%. But DGIN still, it was um, a higher error rate as we've seen before, even modifying uh, the germline uh, genes. So to the second objective, uh, germline allele discovery, uh, the approach here is, sorry about that. So we used uh, samples uh, of expressed I, I, IgM bovine repertoire sequences of four bovine breeds. Most interesting, uh, we're really interested in the African breed. So Ankole, Boran, and Dama are the African breeds and the Frisian for the Western as a con control. And really, uh, the choice of this uh, sample is, was based on the availability of sequence uh, data. And so the first thing was to uh, discover the alleles uh, using two tools, IG Discover and TIGA. Then try to compare the novel alleles discovered by both methods and look for identical novel alleles. Then trying to rank potential novel alleles to see whether we can move ahead and try to validate the uh, alleles that uh, were discovered. And last, looking at the um, using pairwise humming distances of this uh, novel allele discovered to measure uh, genetic diversity. So trying to understand how these two tools uh, work, I'll start with IG Discover, which is an iterative uh, uh, process. So of uh, four processes. So the first step is the initializing uh, initial assignment, where now we classify the VDJ in the input sequences using IG Blast. Then the next step is uh, clustering, where now we try to in, uh, the tool set tries to inspect database alleles one by one to find uh, clusters of uh, novel sequences, and it does this by two processes, windowed uh, and linkage clustering approach. And then the third step um, is uh, the filtering step, where it happens in two ways. pre germline filtering, which is less strict and we expect to have more novel alleles discovered. And then uh, lastly, the germline filtering, which is more strict with strict parameters to have uh, more accurate novel uh, alleles at the end. Now we have the end novel alleles. Something that I didn't mention, the input were expressed IgM, bovine repertoire sequences, as well as uh, a database germline VDJ as the reference in the process. Uh, TIGA. This is an overview workflow of how TIGA uh, discovers the novel allele. Uh, so it's a bit different from IG Discover with two inputs, uh, the database and pre-process uh, bovine uh, IG sequences. So first, the initial assignment that it uses uh, IMGT to assign the uh, VDJ, then detects the novel alleles using mutation patterns. And once you get, uh, once uh, TIGA gets the novel alleles, it combines it with the German database to extend your assignment. Then it tries to infer the genotype to get your personalized uh, VDJ assignments. So the findings of the second objective, so because I mentioned IG Discover uh, is an iterative uh, process, so we, we ran uh, 20 and 30 iterations uh, of IG Discover, and really these more iterations is just to get a plateau first uh, so that we are sure that we're not discovering more novel alleles. And above here, the, uh, the above line graphs actually show uh, results before germline filtering, and below here is after germline filtering. So I'll start with before filtering, you see that the African breeds in green are Ancole, then red Boran, and uh, Ndama, which we ran 30 iterations, I've got a high number of uh, novel alleles. Uh, yet, uh, the, if you look at the Frisian has got lower, 155. Mark you with the starting uh, database of uh, 27, 
at the zero uh, number iterations. But more interesting, we see that after the germline filtering, we see a lower number of African, uh, of novel alleles uh, in African breeds. And one possible explanation of this is because the starting database is, is composed of alleles described in Western breeds, which are phylogenetically distant uh, to the African uh, breeds. So this is a table that shows the novel alleles discovered by IG Discover and, and TIGA. And the numbers here for TIGA, for example, in Boran and Frisian and Ndama, we see that it discovered 15, and I, we considered uh, seven novel alleles. The, the reason for this is the fact that some of these novel alleles had, had got uh, zero number of unique CDR3s, as well as J, uh, J genes, and some uh, novel alleles discovered were actually identical sequences, but they were actually named <laughs> differently. So differently, so we tried to uh, discard them. And looking at the comparison of these uh, two novel alleles, uh, two methods, we found that we are some identical. For example, in Boran, uh, V117 allele number one from IG Discover was identical to uh, V127 allele number two from TIGA. And you can notice that um, uh, the gene that they actually originate from is actually different. In this case, V117 and V121. And Cole had one pair of identical novel alleles, that is the V17 allele number one from IG Discover, and uh, V17 allele number one from TIGA. So you notice that, uh, for example, six, uh, S6 T322 is just the numbering system of how IG Discover would name the novel allele. So looking at the haplotype uh, network of these uh, uh, novel alleles discovered by IG Discover, so by haplotype, uh, haplotype, yeah, I mean uh, it's their unique, unique sequences. So from this network here, you see that the numbers are the minimum distances. And in yellow, we see that these are uh, uh, novel alleles from uh, Ndama breed, which seem to be very, uh, seem to be distant as compared to Boran in red circle that have, some are a bit distant and others are less distant. But on Kole in green, we see that uh, they're not uh, very distant. And it's, we, only, we also observed that uh, novel allele of V17 gene was only this, uh, observed in an Cole uh, breed. Looking at the haplotype network again in, uh, in results from uh, TIGA, uh, we see additional novel alleles that originate from V137 uh, gene as well as V1. Uh, 39 uh, genes. Again, although TIGA discovered more novel alleles in DAMA compared to IG Discover, 10 of the novel alleles are actually closely related to each, uh, to each other. So you can see here 14 and five, so the distance is not that uh, distant. So we went ahead and looked at the distribution of these pairwise humming distances. Yeah, trying to compare, looking at uh, the result from my left is uh, from uh, IG Discover and uh, for my right is uh, TIG. And we see that the distribution of the African breed is actually shifted to the right to show that uh, they're actually distant as compared to Frisian, which is our control. Um, again, look, uh, I show a box plot that uh, shows again the distribution of these pairwise humming distances. So if you look at the median humming distances of for African breeds, for IG Discover and Tiga are actually higher compared to the Frisian, which is actually low. And this will actually uh, show us that uh, the African uh, novel germline alleles are actually more diverse as compared to the Frisian, Frisian breed. So to specifically look at uh, individual uh, breed in the African, we found that Ndama actually largely attributed to 
the, the greater uh, genetic diversity seen in African breed, as you can see in Dama here, the far uh, far right, uh, the medians are uh, are higher compared to the rest, and generally uh, the novel alleles discovered by Tiga were seen to be to have uh, many genetic differences compared to the novel alleles identified by IG Discover. So, in conclusion, uh, IG Blast and IMGT Hive Quest are best for V gene annotation, whereas mix here is uh, better at annotating J genes. Uh, when annotating uh, V genes, uh, the frequencies of V133 and V121 should be uh, summed up because they are actually identical, G, uh, they are identical genes. Uh, the African novel uh, germline alleles are seen to be more diverse compared to uh, Frisian. Again, lastly, uh, identical uh, alleles discovered having different parent, uh, parent genes demonstrate how closely the bovine uh, V genes are to each other related. I'd like to acknowledge my supervisors, uh, Ian Bitt, funded by NIH for their financial support, uh, Kwan University, uh, Isipe, and Becca Ilrihab for hosting me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michael. That was a really, really wonderful talk. I'm sure everybody online agrees. Um, we are just going to shift to Muhammad's talk first before we start taking any questions. Um, and then we'll have some time for question and discussion at the end of Muhammad's talk. So Muhammad, would you like to start sharing your screen? and get your presentation up. Okay, Bruno. Sure, while you're doing that, uh, just allow me to very quickly introduce to you Mohamed Maiga, who is a student at the end of his master's degree in bioinformatics at the African Center of Excellence of the University of Science and Technology in Bamako. So, <clears throat> Muhammad is almost at the end of his thesis, and I'm sure he's quite excited to then deliver this talk. It should be a really nice talk, summing up um, some of his work. So, without me taking up too much time, Muhammad, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Muhammad Mega. Today, I'm going to show you the problem of peak of the mass of TVs is called imidazole petrazine kill bulb ring and dormant ring in wild type and K13 optimizing resistant plasmodium falciparum in vitro. For that, we, we are follow display. Introduction. Malaria is a potent fatal parasitic disease caused by protein of the genus plasmodium. The parasite is transmitted to human by the bait of infested female onofel mosquitoes. Of the five species infected human, the falciparum is the species responsible for most serious cases and death. 228 million cases in the world, with 98% in Africa and 2% in Southeast Asia. Malaria parasite life cycle. It starts by bite of the mosquito. The, the mosquito transmits to human the sporozoites. The sporozoites infected the hepatocytes and give the schizont. And the schizont relies the hepatocyte and the schizont press the, uh, the hepatocytes and relies the merozoite in the bloodstream. The merozoite infested the erythrocytes to give ring stage, trophozoite stage, and schizont stage. Again, the schizont press the erythrocytes and they release merozoite in the bloodstream, and the cycle continues. Effort made to gain malaria. Many efforts were made to fight malaria, such as kinin and artemisinin colored ITC, ITC for artemisinin treatment combination. 
in 2008, ATC were used a first line treatment. The emergence of resistance to artemisinin and its derivative is a prompting re research researcher to reflect next generation of anti-malaria drugs. The APZ colored imidazolopiprazine are good promising candidates. There are compounds in the imidazolopiprazine class showed promise in the cell-based screen study for next generation anti-malaria drugs, colored KF156 and JNF179. KF is in clinical trial phase two. In this study, we characterize the stage of action of JNF evaluated its activity against ring and dormant ring. Dormant ring is the artemisinin resistant parasite. And show its effect in the therapeutic association with K and K. KDU is the compound is only susceptible in the artemisinin resistant parasite content the K13 mutation. M for the study. The general M is to characterize the stage of action of APZ on wild type and artemisinin resistant parasite and to see its effect in the therapeutic combination with other drugs in vitro. The specific M's determine the life stage of the parasite most susceptible to JNF. Determine the effect of JNF on artemisinin resistant parasite called dormant wild type parasite are the control. Determine JNF effect in <coughs> association with DHT and KDU. Material or method. Anti malaria drug, the compound KDU, artemisinin, and JNF were synthesized in, ho in house by Novartis. Parasite P. falciparum field clinical isolate were obtained from major university of Bakong, Thailand. All clinical isolate and laboratory update strand of P. falciparum were cultured using standard RPM. The sample were collected under approved ethical guideline of Oxford Tropical Research Ethic Committees. The parasites were treated with JNF and artemisinin at each stage of erythrocyte life cycle for 24 and 72 hours, and then the mitotracker was used to see the viability of the parasites. Treating ring and dormant ring Derma ring the, is the parasite to contain the K13 mutation in JNF and KDU. The ring were then treated with DHA, DHA for dehydroartemisinin, and DHA associated with JNF and DHA associated with KDU in 6 and 24 hours. The result, the first result is to know the stage of action of JNF on the stage of the erythrocyte stage. In here, for the graph E, we can see that JNF are more susceptible to schizont uh, than more other stage. Such as the ring and trophozoid stage. But at 20 and 72 hours, we can see that the two compounds, artemisinin and JNF, kill all parasites. In the red, we can see the JNF effect in ring stage used mitotracker. Mitotracker is are used to know the viability of the parasite. If its color in green means that the parasites are living. But we are treated ring stage by JNF at six and 24 hours. And we can see that JNF kill ring stage, uh, the ring parasite at uh, 72 hours. But we conclude that JNF stage of action is characterized by rapid killing of schizont and slower but potential killing the ring stage of parasite. 
the effect of JNF on ring and dormant ring. Dormant ring is the resistant parasite of art to artemisinin content decay terpene mutation. For that, we are use a second compound as a control called KDU. KDU is susceptible only to the dormant ring. That means the resistant artemisinin resistant parasite. But in the graph E, we can see that JNF kill the normal ring. In the graph B, we can see that the both JNF and KDU kill the dormant ring. And we conclude that J APZ imidazole peperazin kill both ring and dormant ring parasite regardless of the K13 phenotype. The three result. JNF is a partner drug in therapeutic association between KDU and DHA for d artemisinin. For that, we are associating DHA with KDU and JNF. And in the graph E, we can see that JNF associated to DHA kill all parasites at 6 and 24 hours in lab update parasite. In graph B, we are, we are tested the same in the clinical isolate. And we see the, the same result, DHA and JNF kill all parasites at six hours and 24 hours. And we conclude that artemisinin in combination with imidazolopiprazine, but not KDU, kill wild type and K13 artemisinin isolate. Conclusion. The result, the result of this study demonstrated the effectiveness of JNF in the control and elimination of malaria. It's very active in the schizoid stage of parasite life cycle. It kill ring and dormant ring artemisinin resistant parasite. It could be a good partner for DHA, DHA dehydroartemisinin in the treatment of malaria. Hello, JNF has the potential to become the new drug to fight malaria. Its mechanism of action is still poorly understood. This problematic is the subject of my master thesis. Thank you to listen to me. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And uh, I'm sorry really... for my bad English. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think we all appreciate it when you put yourself out there and you try. And we're not here to judge anybody's English at all. I think it was a great effort, especially if English is probably your third, fourth or fifth language. <laughs> um, so with that, yeah. thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank you for being thank here you. and doing the presentation. Thank you, thank you to Michael as well two really great presentations. Um, I'm going to open up the floor for a few minutes for questions. We actually have ample time. Um, so if there are any questions for either of our presenters, please do go ahead and, and ask them now. You can also type them into the chat box and I can read them aloud for you. Bernard, please can you repeat please? Oh no, I was just um, asking if there are any questions about your, your talk or Michael's talk. So then I think everybody know her question. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like <laughs> there, there are too many questions coming in here. Um, I have one <laughs> question actually um, mm -hmm. um, for both of you, which might be yeah. a little bit off topic from the talk, but uh, the question that I'd like to ask is, um, so both of you are running analyses that are, are, are quite computationally intensive, it seems. Um, where are you running these these analyses? Are you running these analyses locally? Are you 
Are you getting support from um, any cloud resources? So I'm just I'm just quite quite interested to hear how you're managing with with all of these analyses because they are quite computationally intensive. Okay, for for to resolve this problematic, we are use the ArenaSec technique. That is a bioinformatic method. Yeah, and you're just running that locally on your own. Please. I'm just I'm just asking, are you running that locally? I finished that now, but I can present the result in uh, in here. Uh, Verena? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so for my case, uh, we have the HPC uh, here at Beck Builder Hub. So uh, I use a higher performing, for performing uh, for, uh, compu computing, so I don't run them uh, locally. Okay, okay, sure. All the analysis, yeah. And you, you're finding that you, you get results quite quickly? It's working quite well for you? Uh, sometimes you can uh, write a script and load it. You can get your results probably maybe after two or two days. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a pretty quick turnaround, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if, uh, for my case when I was uh, doing uh, discovery of these uh, alleles, Mm. So you get to a point where you run probably maybe 40 iterations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a, f a 40 iteration run would take like two, three days. Yeah. So, yeah. but in line, you, you, you'd you leave that to run, then do another other other analysis as well. Okay, great. So, so pretty intense stuff here. <laughs> I have a question for Michael. Michael, maybe I've missed it because I think I was out of focus for your introduction a bit but you use those four bovine um, breeds um, can you just refresh us on why those four were selected specifically okay so I think I mentioned when I was trying to explain the approach uh, so I used the four uh, breeds uh, because that was the available data uh, wow. already sequenced uh, data. So the three would represent the African uh, breed, breeds and uh, uh, African uh, for the Western, Western. Oh, okay. Yeah. But for a more designed uh, a project, I think maybe more uh, breeds would be good for the analysis. Because mm, yeah. I was thinking about Brahman and Nguni um, cattle breeds. So, exactly. so I was just yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. okay. And then we have um, one more question in the chat box. Um, <clears throat> Winfred is asking, do we expect cultured parasites to accumulate mutations over time when exposed to drugs in vitro? So I think this is directed at Muhammad. Yeah, Verena. There is um, a question in the chat box about your talk. Mm -hmm. Winfred is asking, do we expect cultured parasites to accumulate mutations over time when exposed to drugs in vitro. Yeah. In, in vitro and also isolate clinic. Yeah, here I say that is kill the artemisinin resistant parasite. And in my introduction, I say that uh, it is in uh, the it is in the clinical trial phase two in Cambodia. The next uh, the next country can be Mali. 
in this in soon okay winfred is that um, on your question yes it does Uh, you have um, a follow-up question. I'll just read it quickly. Uh, Muhammad um, Winfred has pasted another question in the chat box um, asking, what is the plausible explanation of more diversity of the genes in our African breeds compared to the control? And could it be due to exposure to infectious diseases in the continent that drives that diversity? Okay, I think that's that's my question. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Winfred, for that question. Um, it could be uh, due to exposure uh, to infectious diseases in the continent, but again, I'd 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 uh, think uh, because uh, not much has been done uh, for the African breeds, and so. Um, there's still a gap, so these uh, they're not yet uh, uh, identified adults, and so it, it becomes a challenge to because they are, un, are, are unknown. So there's there's still a gap, yeah, and so I would say that would be another uh, reason. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, so are there any any further questions? We just have a few minutes, I think, left. Um, if there are any others, there's a, a hand raised. Um, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, for the second presenter, um, for the first presenter, sorry, I came a bit late, so I really didn't uh, put the concept together when you uh, present. Anyway, it was very fine. For the second presenter, um, any research work on malaria is always an interesting one, <clears throat> particularly um, the setting that we are in. Uh, it's a uh, it, your your work is very fine, but I didn't really get the acronym, the GNF one seventy nine. Can you can you uh, break? It? Can you really tell us about the acronym? What 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 does it mean? The GNF. Thank you. Thank you very so much for your question. GNF is the, the marker of uh, the new compound. There is the, a, a new class of imidazolopepresin. Uh, it uh, is uh, very active into anti-malaria parasite. Uh, in imidazolopepresin class, we have two, two compounds, KF and GNF. There is a same molecule, but there is different by one allogen in our structure. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. So um, we have been busy with, with the question session for, for quite a while now. Um, um, if there are any other last minute questions, pressing questions, and you are, of course, welcome to ask them. We do have about 15 minutes left for the, for the whole session. Um, so if there are any final questions, you're welcome to ask them. I'll just pause for a second if there are. 
Okay, so if not, I don't see any hands raised. I'd just like to say a big thank you once again to both Mohabin and Michael for two really great talks. Um, I think they, they went really, really well. Um, disappointed that not more people joined us, but we'll try to, to ramp up attendance um, because I think people are really missing out on some really awesome talks and some really um, good time for discussion and, and, and connection between a lot of our, our groups and our faculty groups especially. But thank you to those of you who are on the line and who made it to the talk. Um, I guess we'll see you again in two weeks. So thank you for those wonderful talks once again. Uh, Rolanda and Albert, if you have anything that you'd like to add, you're welcome to go ahead. I'll just speak to you in September. Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing from my side as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so then that's it. Up. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.